Are there problems faced by job seekers during current times? Yes. Jobs are very hard to come by because of COVID. Many a times candidates miss out on job opportunities because they didn't have a better degree or had a poor network. Even when we apply for a job in top startups, but our resume keeps getting rejected because there are 100 others applying too. But the question is, is there a way to get a job based on our skills and talent rather than not depending upon any degree or other people in our network? The answer is yes. Relevel tests by an academy. Over 50 plus companies including top startups and unicorns like Cred, Upgrad, Razropay, Urban Company, Webengage and many more offering roles. 1000 plus job positions across business development, front end development and back end development. Completely online and can be taken from the comfort of our home. 100% refund if we get a job through Relevel. The best part is if we finish the test in a single day of our choice, we get the Relevel scores within 24 hours. Once we clear the test, we get to create an amazing candidate profile which help us showcase our skills and make us stand out from the crowd. And there is a saying, something that stands out, it always noticed by the company. We need not depend upon our college degree for the finding the right job. If we have skills, we will be able to crack the relevel tests and sit for an interview at the company of our choice. Now let us see how to apply for it. At first, we visit the relevel page. Then we register for the test of our choice by paying 199 rupees. We can also use the coupon code to avail 10% discount at the time of registration. Once we receive our relevel scores, we create our candidate profiles. Relevel will guide us with the process. Once the profile is created, companies will reach out to us based on our profile. The better the relevel scores, the more the companies will reach out to us. This test is not restricted to BTEC or MBA only. Anyone interested can participate in it. There are three tests being conducted. business development back end development and front end and back end development we can also use the coupon code pxp10 to avail a discount of rupees 200 Hello everyone. My name is Ritvika Bhattacharya and I am a third year CSE BTEC undergraduate from BIT Chennai. I am currently maintaining a CGPA of 9.66. I am particularly interested in machine learning and web development due to which I have been a part of the Android club in the college and a part of the web development team in Google DSC. Recently uh, during the internship season which was conducted by the pat office itself i got selected as summer intern 2021 for wells fargo which is an american multinational financial services company having its branches in india as well so as far as the selection process is considered like every other company that comes to the college a registration form is sent by the pat office to fill in our details including our resumes and academic performance over the years and it's mostly open to around all the branches and all the students so after filling that uh, based on some internal criteria which was not disclosed to us they selected around 140 students for the written interview round and then uh, based on the results of that round around 27 got selected for the next round and finally as far as i remember 10 students were offered the final internship roles
So, um, in the interview process, the initial level was a written round where we were given two coding questions which were to be attempted in 60 minutes and this could be done in any programming languages. And in the same uh, round itself, we also had MCQs uh, firstly based on English verbal which were like 12 MCQs to be done in 15 minutes. And then we also had a kind of statistical and business analytics section where you know the questions were from graphical interpretation or stocks prices profit loss more so because it was a financial company i feel and that was all for uh, round one then we had a round two which was a technical interview round which was conducted on zoom itself so uh, in this round questions uh, were mainly from oops and python because that was the programming language i opted for during my coding interview round and uh, yeah, we were asked those questions and even there was a given program given to me and I had to like reduce the time complexity of that program and similar questions. Then round three was also a technical interview round, but this time the focus was more on the projects and uh, skills I had mentioned in my resume. Those were asked in quite a lot of detail and uh, additional focus was also there on DBMS networking and other core concepts. And finally, uh, round four was a very friendly HR interview kind of round where, you know, they ask questions about your weakness, strength, career preferences, future plans, etc. Uh, well, for the preparation, I usually practice the coding concepts and topics from Geeks for Greeks and apply those concepts on problems in lead code. Lead code, you know, has a very vast collection of questions arranged topic wise as well as difficulty level wise, and it's a really good head start for beginners. And if you're running short on time during an interview season, then you could also go for something called an interview preparation kit available on HackerRank, which has a compact version of the important topics you would need and apart from the coding uh, you also need to know the core concepts uh, which I personally found out through the interview archives of various people available on Geeks for Geeks. So going through that I realized that uh, Wells Fargo as a company particularly focuses on networking and DBMS. So again I just revise those concepts from various online resources like Java, T Point, GFG, etc. So, as I mentioned, the coding round had two questions which had to be done in 60 minutes. Honestly, I don't remember the exact questions, but the first one was a number format conversion question which I did using linked list, but I'm pretty sure there are a lot of other ways to do it. And the second one was an application of strings and substrings, which particularly is a dynamic programming problem, but it could be done otherwise also, except that to pass all the test cases within the time limit, I feel you had to go with TV. Uh, well, so for me, I have been a part of the Android club, which is a technical club. And I must mention that it did help me learn a lot of new emerging technologies like React and Node, which are definitely a good thing to put up on your resume. But here I also must mention that if you are not a part of a technical club, that does not mean you cannot acquire those skills because there are a lot of plenty of resources available. But yeah, there is an added advantage of, you know, exposure and learning from the seniors, which and they have a lot to offer, which is not offered by our curriculum. So yeah, I had a really great time the entire year with my club organizing and collaborating on actual technical projects, which will somehow help, I know. So honestly, even I don't know if something called a perfect resume exists, but of course there are some do's and don'ts like make sure everything is in chronological order, whether it's your work experience or projects or your academic details. 
Uh, coming to projects, yeah. Um, even if you have done a lot of projects, make sure you don't put them in a cramped manner in your resume. Keep it concise, the four or five projects which are most important and most relevant to display your skills. And uh, make sure your projects are in sync with the skills and certifications that you have mentioned in your resume. So that, you know, the interviewer or the person reviewing your uh, resume has a fair idea that, okay, this person has some practical application of the concepts and not just the theoretical knowledge. Work experience, well, definitely work experience have a very important place in your placements. But uh, for internships, I personally felt that even if you don't have a very detailed uh, work experience previously, they don't hold it against you, provided you have impressive projects on your resume and uh, you know about your core concepts. Because even they know that if you are applying for an internship at the first place, then you will uh, you are doing so because you want work experience. So yeah, uh, for internships especially focus more on core concepts and projects but if you have a work experience then definitely it's a cherry on the top so uh, in soft skill they teach you all the analytical and reasoning things in the first two years itself which i'm pretty sure you will forget by the time you come into the placement or the internship season so it would be better to revise those concepts online or wait for the college to offer you those placement training sessions where they again go through those things other than that uh, in the third year soft skill is more focused on programming concepts in java so i felt that it was quite helpful to learn or keep in touch with at least one of the programming languages during the internship period Uh, well, uh, regarding the placement ratio, we have not been told anything spe uh, specific till now. I believe we will have a fair idea once we complete the entire internship period. And again, it also depends from company to company. Till now, we just know that out of the 140 people shortlisted in the initial round, only 10 were offered the final role, the final internship role. But anything more than that will be available only after we complete this internship season. CGPA. Well, I don't think there is anything new to tell. Uh, it's the usual uh, focus on what's taught in class and make sure to collect the notes if you missed the class before the exams at least. Maybe, you know, try to focus on your academics more in the initial semesters where you have theory only courses because um, it's easier to get marks that way. Once the uh, labs and the projects come in, it becomes a little more difficult. And why I'm saying this is because I feel the CGPA is important during the placement, uh, particularly in the first round where they shortlist uh, based on CGPA itself. So uh, if you maintain a higher CGPA and if you have a CGPA in the higher range, so for companies say which shortlist uh, on a higher threshold like 8.5 or 9, then you have an added advantage of uh, less competition because few people get shortlisted in the first round itself. Ah, advice. Uh, so I'll just say something from my personal experience. If you are in second or third year, try to maintain proper notes on important core subjects taught in college itself, like DSA, networking, DBMS, software, etc., etc. So that you know, you don't have to spend a lot of time revising those concepts during internships or placements. I did not do that, and I had to literally start over, which is really painful and time-consuming. Also, try to focus on any one particular programming languages so that, you know, you get familiar with all the tricks and hacks of those, uh, of that language while you're practicing the questions itself. And lastly, during interviews, uh, try not to laugh about anything because that has a really negative impact on your reviewer. Just be confident with whatever you know and uh, don't answer for questions which you don't know. 
So yeah, that's all and all the best to everyone.